encourage us uh, in some spiritual manner, some spiritual way. Hallelujah. And uh, again, thank you for the gift. Uh, I'm used to wearing $79 J.C. Penny suits, <laughs> which is about what this one just cost me about two or three weeks ago. I did break down. It's been several years since I bought a new suit. I broke down two or three weeks ago and went to J.C. Penny and bought the suit. I think it ended up it was $119, and they gave us some discounts and stuff. And probably cost me about $79 or $80. I'm used to wearing those kind of suits, not not $1,500 worth of suits. I promise you I will not buy just one suit for $1,500. I'll buy many or several, whatever I can get for that. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. If y'all could just do something about my face getting old and my hair turning gray and all this stuff. Y'all make me look young again. I greatly appreciate that too. So, <laughs> hallelujah. See, growing old. Amen. Uh, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Starting in verse 9, reading down. Verse 9, Revelation chapter 7 says, And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon, sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, and power and might. Be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And which came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. <clears throat> and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. I want you to notice verse 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all of their tears. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to... kind of reverse a sign that is seen uh, as you drive through Gatlinburg, Tennessee, or Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Amen. If you ever make it up there, some of us have made it up there many a times. You're, real, you're well familiar with the signs that line up down the road there. Amen. That, that say, amen, uh, food and a show, dinner and a show. You'll ride down Pigeon Forge, ride up 441 there, and you'll see that posted on all a lot of the signs along the way there. Dinner and a show. Well, I reverse that this morning for a title. Hallelujah. And I just simply want to talk to you from a show and a dinner. Somebody say, a show and a dinner. Show and a dinner. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, amen. It's... It, it, uh, this is obviously uh, a vision that John the Revelator is having, amen, on the Isle of Patmos. It is obviously a vision that he is having of heaven, hallelujah, amen, and of those, amen, who will occupy heaven, praise God, hallelujah, amen. The, all of the ingredients are, are here, the, 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 the Lord is here, the angels are here, the elders are here, the beasts are here, and the people are all depicted Amen. In this vision that John is having and that the Bible describes, 
amen, uh, for us. Hallelujah. The Bible describes, amen, all of these people in heaven as a great multitude. A great multitude. Hallelujah. Which no man could number. Hallelujah. And that's just kind of mind-blowing to me. Hallelujah. I did a little Google search to try to find out the greatest mathematical number, amen, that's ever been recorded. And basically, there is none. Hallelujah. Amen. There's folks that claim that they know the, amen, the, the, the biggest mathematical number that's ever been used. But hallelujah. And it all boils down to it. Amen. Amen. There is no ultimate mathematical number. You can just keep on counting and counting and counting and counting and counting and counting. Amen. Uh, you know, for eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, this multitude of people that's in heaven, amen, is above any number that man has ever been able, amen, to come up with. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, which no man could number of all nations, of all kindreds and peoples and tongues. Amen. They all stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed, amen, with white robes and palms in their hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that verse of Scripture alone ought to encourage, amen, all of us here, amen, this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. That, uh, amen. Why should it encourage us, Brother Morrell? Amen. Well, it should encourage us, amen, since the devil tells us, amen, that we're not going to make it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He tells us all the time, hey, you're not going to make it. You might as well give up and quit. You might as well throw in the towel and quit. You're not going to make it. Amen. Neither is anybody else going to make it. Heaven is just a myth. Hallelujah. Heaven is just a myth. Praise God. He's a liar. Again, amen, hallelujah, amen. If you are a faithful believer in God, you put your trust in the Word of God, amen. You put your confidence in the Word of God. You know as well as I know, amen, that the devil is just lying again to us. Amen. The facts of the matter is, according to these verses of Scripture and many others, Amen. Heaven will be occupied by a host of people. Amen. Generated through 7,000 years of human history. Amen. And I intend to be one of those in that number. My intentions are being in that number. Hallelujah. And I'm sure, amen, the fact that you're in church this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. On a, on a pretty summer day, you could be out fishing. You could be out, amen, doing a lot of other things, cutting your grass, trimming your bushes, painting your house, doing whatever, amen, you could do on a pretty summer day. Hallelujah. But you're in the house of God this morning. Amen. And that makes me to know that you have some intentions, amen, of being in that number also. Hallelujah. So I congratulate you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. But you need to look at somebody and say, hey, amen, let's live so that we can go to heaven someday. Let's live so that we can go to heaven someday. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 16 shows us, amen, the contrast, amen, in how heaven is going to be different Amen, For what, from what we are accustomed to down here. Hallelujah. Amen, just a little glimpse, just a little insight. Amen, verse 16 gives us, amen, on how different, amen, it's going to be in heaven than it is down here. Hallelujah. Amen, in the here and the now, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says this. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, sister. Hallelujah. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Amen. For they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Amen. Now when we get to heaven, amen, there's going to be no more hunger. And there's going to be no more thirst. Hallelujah. Amen. But while we're down here in the here and the now, amen, the Bible tells us blessed are they, amen, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. But he didn't just tell us, amen, blessed are we, amen, just because we have a hunger, amen, and a thirst for righteousness, amen. But he also adds a promise to that, amen, hunger and thirst that we have, amen, by saying, and they shall be filled. 
Thank God for the promise of God. Amen. To everybody that is hungry and thirsty for the Lord. Hallelujah. And that they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If we as individuals have a hunger for God, a thirst for God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a big if there. If we have, amen, that hunger for God and that thirst for God. Amen. We have what it takes to make it to heaven. Amen, because we're not going to make it to heaven without a hunger and without a thirst for God. Hallelujah. Amen, so that's a, amen, that's a necessary thing. Hallelujah. Amen, for us to be in that number, amen, that is recorded in Revelation chapter 7, if we're going to make it in that number, hallelujah, then we got to have a hunger and thirst for God. Hallelujah. Amen, in, in Psalms chapter 23 and verse Five, amen. David said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. David said something here that we need, amen, to look at just a moment, and we need to consider. Hallelujah. Amen. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Hallelujah. God prepares a table for his people. Hallelujah. Amen. God prepares a table for his people. Amen. For us to come and to eat and to drink. Amen. From the master's table. Hallelujah. Amen. But we need to understand that. Hallelujah. Every time we come to eat and to drink. Amen. From the master's table. Hallelujah. That there are going to be enemies. Amen. Trying to prevent us from getting what we need from God. Amen. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. That was an Old Testament verse of Scripture. Hallelujah. And I don't know if I fully understand everything David was pertaining to there. Hallelujah. But, amen, I do know that that Scripture also pertains to us. Amen. When we come to spiritually eat from God's table. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy of our soul is quite sly. Amen. He does his best. Amen. To to stir up our appetite. Amen. Toward worldly things every day, all day long. Amen. Our job, our family, politics, Hollywood. Amen. He wants us to be so full when we come to church. Amen. That we'll not have any appetite whatsoever. Amen to what is presented to us on the Lord's table. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know your job is important to you. I know your family is important to you. I know that politics are important. Hallelujah. Hollywood is not important whatsoever. Hallelujah. But, amen, the things that we have to, amen, pay attention to and be concerned about down here, amen, in this natural world, amen, should never outweigh, amen, our desire to drink and eat from the Lord's table. Hallelujah. Amen. We should never be so full of the world, so full of cares, so full of concerns of, uh, amen, of the world, hallelujah, that we cannot come to God's house. And eat, eat from God's table. Hallelujah. By the time some people get to church, they've done shouted and danced and leaped for joy over somebody winning a ball game. Amen. To the point that they don't have any appetite. Amen. To shout and to dance and to leap for joy in the house of God. That appetite has been whetted. That appetite has been dismantled. Amen. Outside of the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If your team wins, it's all right to be happy. Amen. But don't get so happy. Amen. Because your team won a game. Amen. That you don't have no appetite. Amen. To get excited in the house of God. Amen. I'm glad that I go to a church this morning. Amen. That loves to get excited. Amen. About shouting and dancing and leaping for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people come to church on Sunday and they done wept and cried over every soap opera character that has died. Amen. On their favorite soap opera. (laughs) 
their favorite character died on the soap opera. And they sat there on their living room couch and wept and cried and wept, wept and cried and Hallelujah, and just, amen, got depressed and got the mully grubs over, amen, this soap opera character, hallelujah, amen, that they don't have any appetite, amen, to shed any tears in the house of God. I know there's all kind of documentaries coming on, amen, of, amen, of how, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on and talking about how animals are mistreated. My family was sitting around talking yesterday evening about how they mistreat, amen, the whales down in, uh, in, in Florida down there, praise God, in uh, whatever, Mickey Mouse land, whatever you call it, hallelujah, amen, how they mistreat the whales. And then uh, you can go to, Afri- uh, go to uh, Alaska and you can find out how they mistreat animals up there and how they mistreat animals in, in Africa and how they mistreat animals over here, hallelujah, and, and all this stuff, praise God, hallelujah. And we can weep and cry over the mistreatment of a creature or animal. And and it is sad. I have to say, amen, it is sad. Hallelujah. And uh, I asked my grandson yesterday, I said, are you going to be a deer hunter when you grow up? He said, no. He said, I don't like killing stuff. I said, you didn't mind eating that chicken leg while ago. You didn't feel sorry for that chicken you was just eating. I was just picking at him, trying to. You know, stir him up a little bit. Hallelujah. But, you know, we can weep and cry over animals. We can weep weep and cry over things like that. Hallelujah. Amen. But when we come to the house of God, we ought to have a tear left. Amen. We ought to, hey, it can be tears of joy. It don't have to be tears of, amen, uh, 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 of disappointment. Amen. We can come to the house of God and get so excited. Amen. That before you know it, your eyes are tearing up. Hallelujah. My eyes was tearing up during, amen, song service this morning. I just couldn't, uh, amen, stop it. Hallelujah. My eyes was tearing up. I was shedding a tear in the house of God. Hallelujah. I don't ever want to get to the place that I can't shed a tear in the house of God. Hallelujah. We hear so much fake news, amen, out there in the world, amen, that we we have no appetite, amen, for any real news in the house of God. I didn't come to church to hear no news. Amen. Well, yeah, you should have come to church to hear some good news. And the good news is that you can be born again of the water and the Spirit. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost and you can make heaven your home someday. Amen. That's the good news. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it ought to bring a tear to your eye when you think, amen, about the sacrifice that he paid to save us. Hallelujah. If heaven, if Calvary can't bring a tear to your eye, then I don't know that anything else will. Hallelujah. Amen. But hey, amen. He wants us to be full. That's what the devil wants when we come to church. Amen. So that we'll have no appetite when it's time to come to God's table. We've all done this. I guess we all have. I know that I have. There have been times that, you know, I've been working during the day and maybe get off a little bit early and heading home, thinking in my mind, well, my wife's not going to have supper ready till maybe 7 o'clock. You know, and I, by chance, got off of work at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you know, and I, uh, you know, I just, I, I don't think I can wait till 7 o'clock to eat supper. You know, I was starving to death. So I'd stop at the store and I'd grab me a snack to hold me over, amen, for supper time. Hallelujah. Just to get home, crack the kitchen door, going in the house and see supper sitting on the table. Supper ready to be eaten. Hallelujah. And I knew right then, just as well as you knew right then, if you've ever made that mistake, you messed up. Mama cooked a big, nice supper, and uh, you just stopped and ate a candy bar and a pack of crackers to hold you over. Huh? Hallelujah. (laughs) You know, it's hard to eat when you're already full. Hallelujah, that's the point I'm trying to make. It's hard to eat when you're already full. Hallelujah, so we need to make sure that we don't come to church, amen, full of everything so much that we can't eat from God's table. Hallelujah. Amen, what happens when you're full? What happens when you're you're full? Hallelujah, well, if it's in a natural sense, amen, you may sit down and 
Hallelujah. Try to strike up a conversation with your wife. Amen. To make her not pay any attention to, to the fact that you're not really eating her food. You're getting a, you know, this, this heavy conversation. Hallelujah. And while you're in a heavy conversation, you're, you're, you're taking a fork and you're pushing the food around in your plate. Making it look like, amen, you've taken a few bites of it. But no, you can't eat because you're slapped full. Huh? <clears throat> amen. That's what we do. We push the food around on our plates. To, amen. And then when she gets up and goes to maybe get you a glass of tea or whatever, you cover it up with a napkin. You push it over to the side, hoping that she won't see it. Let me tell you something. Those tricks don't ever work. She's going to know you didn't eat her food. She's going to be mad for a week. Huh? Hallelujah. Or at least a day. <laughs> Hopefully not a week. Maybe you can make it up to her before the day's over. Hallelujah. Amen. But nevertheless, amen. Hallelujah. When we're pushing our food around on our plate, trying to cover it up with a napkin, amen, we'll not be focused on what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. And that is eating and drinking from the Lord's table. Hallelujah. When I go to church, I want to focus Amen, on eating, amen, eating what has been prepared for me. Amen, drinking, amen, of the Spirit of God, eating the Word of God, amen, that is preached to me while I'm there. Hallelujah. <clears throat> amen, how many parents get aggravated at your kids when it's time to eat? Amen, but they're just nibbling on their food. They're texting on the phone. They're playing a game on an iPad. Amen, or they're distracted by something else. Hallelujah. Amen, you know good and well that you get aggravated at your kids. When they come to the table, distracted by other things. Huh? Amen, that's why a lot of families today, amen, are making supper time a special time, amen, and are not allowing not one member of the family to bring a phone or an iPad or anything like that again to the dinner table. I think that's a smart move, amen, hallelujah, because when you're with your family, when you're with the people that you love, hallelujah, amen, you need to be focusing on them, amen, focusing on them, hallelujah, and your relationship with them. Praise God. But we've all gotten aggravated. We've all experienced these things. Amen. When you cook and prepare food for your family to eat and they simply don't eat it because they're already full. Amen. Of snacks and candy and drinks to the point that they can't eat another bite. That's why the devil does his part to try to make sure that we're already full of worldly stuff so we'll have no appetite Amen. We'll have no appetite for what God has for us in the house. Our flesh is so full, amen, that we can ignore the hunger in our soul. Amen. Listen to, listen to me. Amen. Your flesh, amen, can be so full, amen, that it, it will make you ignore the hunger of your soul. You got to realize, hallelujah, amen, that you're not just flesh, but you are flesh and spirit, amen, flesh and soul, hallelujah, amen, and your soul needs to be fed, amen, just as much or more so than your flesh needs to be fed, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. So, uh, Psalms 23, he prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. Hallelujah. The Lord prepares the table. Well, I want to tell you something about the God that I serve. He don't force me to eat. He'll prepare the table. He'll spread the table. Hallelujah. Amen. Out there and give me the opportunity to get at it. Amen. I want to tell you what kind of God we serve. He don't force us, amen, to eat. Hallelujah. Like they did in grammar school at Portadale. If you didn't eat, if you didn't eat all everything, if you didn't clean your plate, amen, at Porterdale Elementary School, you didn't get to go to recess. So we learned how to stick our food that we didn't like in our milk cartons. I know y'all heard that before, but hey, I'm kind of proud of that. I got to go to recess anyway. I didn't like their hominy. Uh, I didn't like their pears sitting on a little piece of lettuce with a glob of whatever it was in the middle of it. With a prune sitting on top of it. <laughs> All that stuff got in the, amen, got into the milk carton. Hallelujah. Amen. 
They prepared the table. Amen. We didn't eat, amen, the things that we didn't like to eat. Hallelujah. It's the same way in the house of God. He prepares the table. It's up to you and I to pull up to the table and eat. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 26 and verse 21 says, amen, blessed are ye that hunger now. Blessed are ye that hunger now. Somebody say now. Now I need to be hungry. In the house of God I need to be hungry. Blessed are they are ye that hunger now for ye shall be filled. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Table manners and dining etiquette. Amen. It's been taught. Amen. For generations of time. Amen. It really, really started taking hold in the 17th century. Amen. Among the French. When the fork, amen, was finally invented and introduced to the dinner table. Hallelujah. Amen. The French found the fork. Amen. They, they, they come up with all of this dining etiquette and table manners. Amen. Around how to properly eat a meal and how to properly, amen, set up a dining room table. Hallelujah. Amen. If you ever get the privilege to go on a cruise... You'll see dining etiquette and dining table manners, amen, all put on a show there. Hallelujah. They, amen, take great pride in knowing how to set up a dinner table. Amen. In the course of a meal, amen, you may see four or five different forks put on the table. Amen. Several spoons. Amen. A couple of different knives. And amen, they'll take a napkin, amen, and they'll spread it over your lap for you. Amen. As dining etiquette. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything is, amen, placed so precisely on the table of a cruise ship. You don't know how many times that I've looked at all of this silverware on this side of my plate and all of this silverware on that side of my plate and silverware up here beside this little plate. And, and, and I'm thinking, what in the name of God is wrong with these people? Give me a fork. Give me a fork, give me some food, and let me go at it. Hallelujah. I don't need all this, amen, special stuff. Hallelujah. All I need is one fork and a napkin, praise God. A hungry man usually don't pay any attention to dining etiquette. Amen. If a man's hungry enough, hallelujah, and food is put on the table, he'll dive right in. Not, amen, selecting Amen. The proper utensil, and I know some of you ready, you're probably trying to teach your kids dining etiquette and table manners, and I'm blowing it all. You're ready to throw something at me right now. I just keep trying to teach it to them. Hallelujah. But if they ever come to the table really, really, really hungry, amen, forget about dining etiquette. They're going to get a spoon or a fork, and they're going to shovel it down. Hallelujah. Just like I do when I come to the house of God. Hallelujah. I came in this morning with my dining utensils. I had a fork in one hand, a spoon in another hand. Hallelujah. I came this morning to eat and eat. I have been doing. Hallelujah. I've been eating. I've been drinking ever since I've been in the house of God. Hallelujah. Oh, it would be nice if people would come to church. Uh, hungry? <laughs> And not being so etiquette minded. Huh? You know, everything's got to be so proper, just right. Everything's got to be set just right before you will engage in eating your meal. Hallelujah. It'd be good if folks would just come to church hungry. It would be good if folks would just come to church thirsty. Hallelujah. Give me a uh, drink of water. Give me something to eat. Hallelujah. Amen. Preacher, just, uh, my God, I wish, to, I wish for the day that people would come in with this attitude. Amen. Preacher, just put the food on my plate and let me find a way to eat it. Hallelujah. I'll eat it with a spoon. I'll eat it with a fork. Or if I had to, I'll eat it with my hands. Hallelujah. I can eat it with my hands if I had to. My mother was, she didn't like spoons and forks. She ate everything with her fingers. She'd take a bowl of beans. She'd take bread and put it in beans and mash it up with her fingers. <laughs> I know that sounds gross to y'all. sounds a little grossy to me too, but she did it. I'm a personal witness to somebody that can eat about anything with her fingers. My mother did it all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. If there's one thing that drives me kind of nutty, amen, as a fruitcake, is picky eaters. 
I am surrounded by them. I think half of my family are all picky eaters. Hallelujah. So, amen, if that drives me nutty, then I'm just doomed to be nutty, right? Because I'm surrounded by picky eaters. Hallelujah. Amen. But that's as it, amen, you know, that's okay in a natural way, I guess. Still drives me nutty, but I guess if you don't like something, don't eat it, right? It's okay in a natural way to be kind of picky, I guess. There's a few things I don't eat, not many things. I don't eat escargot. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't eat, really, but hallelujah. But I'm not as picky as a lot of folks are. Hallelujah. Let's not let our, let our natural picky eating status, amen, carry over to the spiritual side of our eating. Hallelujah. Let's don't be so picky that if the preacher ain't preaching on your favorite subject, that you just don't feel like dining that day. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. If he ain't dealing with what you want him to deal with, if he ain't preaching, hey amen, along the lines you want him to preach on on that particular day. Hallelujah. Hey amen. Just dig in and eat anyway. Hallelujah. Hey amen. Take it. Hey amen. Devour it. Eat it. Hey amen. It's necessary. Hallelujah. Hey amen. If God prepares it, you need to eat it. Isaiah 55 and verse 1 says, Ho, <laughs> pay attention here. Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, amen, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. The Bible's telling us here, amen, that we need to come to the table with no money. But when we get to the table, amen, we need to be ready to buy and eat. Buy and buy wine and drink milk. Buy, buy meat, buy bread, buy whatever it is that's prepared that day. Hallelujah. How can you come and eat and have no money and yet when you get there be expected to buy? I thought about that a lot. Hallelujah. How is that possible? How can you buy with no money? Hallelujah. How does this work without money? Hey Amen. Let me tell you something. And I got scripture to back it up. Hallelujah. Your willingness and my willingness, amen, to come to God's table and to eat his food and to drink his drink, amen, purchases the meal ticket for us. Amen. Your willing, listen to me. Amen. Your willingness to come to God's table and eat and drink. Amen. That willingness purchases the meal ticket for you. Amen. You really don't have to have any money. All you got to have is a willingness to come and eat. Amen. I got scripture to back that up. Isaiah 1 and 19 says, If ye be willing and obedient, amen, ye shall eat the good of the land. <laughs> amen. You want to eat the good of the land? You got to be willing and you got to be obedient. Amen. You want to eat from God's table? You ain't got to bring no money. You just got to come with a willingness to eat. I don't know if that made any sense to you, but it makes sense to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Because only those that are willing to eat, amen, gets full. Only those that are willing to drink from the Lord's table gets drink. Hallelujah. So our willingness, God wants us, amen, to be willing to come to his table and eat his food and drink his drink. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The question is this morning, are we hungry enough for God? Are we thirsty enough to, uh, for God, amen, to actually sit down at his table and eat his food? And if we say, no, I'm not willing to do that, then why not? You got to ask yourself this question. No, I'm not, I'm not eating this morning. Amen. You're not preaching my sermon. You're not preaching my pet subject this morning, preacher. I'm not going to eat. Amen. What you're putting on the table here. Hallelujah. Why not? Amen. It's free. Hallelujah, it's nourishing. Amen, if you'll eat it, it will bring life and that more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spiritual life. Amen. More abundant life is spiritual life. Hallelujah. Amen, it's life that goes beyond the natural. 
Hallelujah. Goes, uh, it's a life that goes beyond the fleshly appetites. Amen. Hallelujah. It's life that, amen, is a bring, that is bringing the abundance of God into your spirit, into your soul. Hallelujah. Spiritual life. Amen. That gives us the blessed assurance. Amen. That we will be one of those in that number in Revelation chapter 7. That's the blessed assurance I want. Amen. I want to be assured this morning. I want to come and eat, amen, whatever God has prepared for me so that I can have the blessed assurance that I'm going to be in that number and you're going to be in that number. John chapter 4 and verse 14 verifies that. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to drink from the well. I want to drink from the water spout. I want to drink from the water source. Amen. That promises me everlasting life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whosoever drinketh of that water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall never thirst in that verse of Scripture, kind of sounds like neither thirst anymore in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16. Shall never thirst sounds like neither thirst anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to be through here shortly and let you go. Amen. But let me just cover just a few more thoughts here. Amos chapter 8 and verse 11 says this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. That I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, natural bread, nor a thirst for water, natural water, amen, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when Amos wrote that, that was a time for the future. Behold, the days come. Somewhere out there in the future, amen, that there will be bread aplenty, that there will be water aplenty, hallelujah, amen, but there will be a famine of people wanting to hear the word of the Lord, hallelujah. I think we can say that we have reached that day. I think we can say that we are living in that day, hallelujah, where people, amen, want their ears tickled. Amen. They want to be patted on the back and say, told they're doing okay. Amen. But they don't want to hear the unadulterated Word of God preached to them. Amen. The Word of God that makes us examine our soul, makes us examine our spirit. Amen. To make sure that we are in God where we need to be. Hallelujah. So the message this morning is not about eating natural food or drinking natural water, amen, but rather consuming the Word of God. Hallelujah. Consuming the Word of God. That's where the famine is at. David said in Psalm 42 in verse 2, My soul, now David was a king. I'm sure he had the best food that the kingdom could produce for him. Amen. The best meats, the best, best vegetables, the best fruits, the best bread that the bakers of the kingdom could bake. Hallelujah. The best wine, the best water, the best whatever they drunk in those days. Hallelujah. I mean, David, David had the best of foods. He was a king. Hallelujah. He was treated in a kingly manner. Hallelujah. Not only did he eat well, but his whole household ate well. Amen. Everybody in the palace ate well. You can read the scripture and find out, amen, exactly, amen, what they all ate. He didn't make sure that he just ate well. He made sure that everybody ate well. Hallelujah. But David said in Psalm 42 and verse 2, My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Hallelujah. Well, let me say this. David will get his chance, amen, to stand before God. Amen. And if the words that he recorded for us to read, amen, have any indication to the real desires that David had, amen, if his soul, amen, did thirst after God, 
I'm sure that David's presence before the throne of God, amen, will be a happy day for David. Hallelujah. Amen. David's going to get his chance to stand before the Lord. Amen. Guess what? All of us are going to get our chance. Amen. And I don't know about you, but when I get my chance, hallelujah, that song is sung. Hallelujah. When I get my time, amen, before the throne of God, hallelujah. Amen. I want to hear the words, enter in my good and faithful servant. When I get my time around the throne, I don't want to be in a hurry. Hallelujah. I want, I want, I want to see God. I want to embrace God. I want to feel him. I want to see his nail prints. Hallelujah. Amen. We all want to hear those words enter in that good and faithful servant. Faithful to God. Faithful to his word. Faithful to his church. Faithful to prayer, worship, praise, witnessing, tithing. Amen. And to eating. Amen. On a regular basis from the master's table. Hallelujah. God ain't going to deem us to be faithful if we're not faithful. <laughs> Amen. He's not a liar. Amen. He's not going to say, enter in my good and faithful servant if we hadn't been faithful. God judges our faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. And I certainly want to be faithful in eating from the master's table this morning. Hallelujah. Psalms 107 and verse 9 says... Hallelujah. If y'all want to come and play a little music, give people opportunity to pray if they want to, whatever. Hallelujah. For he satisfied the longing soul. Hallelujah. Just a little short verse of scripture that, that just means so much. He satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. See, my, my soul don't need natural food. My soul don't need potatoes and steak and a salad and bread. My soul don't need green beans and squash and cucumbers and tomatoes and, and all those good things that we can eat every day. Hallelujah. My soul is not longing for grits and eggs for breakfast. Or even a bowl of cereal for breakfast. It's not looking for a half a sandwich and a salad for lunch and a five-course meal at dinner time, supper time. That's not what my soul needs. My soul needs God. My soul needs the goodness of God. Hallelujah. In all of its fullness, my soul needs the goodness of God. And my soul needs to fellowship with the goodness of God. One more verse of scripture. Psalm 63 and verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness. <laughs> and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When my soul is satisfied. Listen to me. Now close. When my soul is satisfied. It's not hard for me to praise him. With joyful lips. When my soul, amen, is being cared for. When my soul is being nourished. When my soul is getting what it needs to get, amen, in the house of God. It's not hard, amen, to lift my hands in praise. It's not hard for me to shout and dance and run the aisles. Hallelujah. It's not hard for me to sing, amen, the songs of Zion. When my soul is satisfied. Hallelujah. With every eye closed and every head bowed, God, feel. God, feel every soul with satisfaction this morning, God. Hallelujah. God, satisfy the longing heart. God, sa God satisfy the longing soul, the longing heart, the longing spirit of men and women and boys and girls that are in the sanctuary right now. Hallelujah. God, some of them are struggling, God, in trying to cope with life. And all that life has thrown in their direction. The curveballs, the knuckleballs. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Life sometimes throws us so many different things at one time. 
that our soul kind of gets drained. Hallelujah. And we start depending upon fleshly stuff to get us by day to day. God, we know that won't work. That won't work for eternity. That won't work in eternity. That won't work leading up to eternity. Go ahead and put my title back up here just for a moment. Hallelujah. When we come to church, we need to pray. Amen. First of all, amen, that God shows up. Because if He don't show up, we don't have dinner. In the house of God, it's not dinner and a show. It's rather God's got to show up. God's got to prepare the table. You and I have got to have willing hearts and be willing vessels enough to pull up to the table. And when we pull up to the table, we can have our dinner. Hallelujah. We can have our meal. We can have, amen. We can eat. Amen. We can eat. Hallelujah. When the Bible says he would he would like us to be, or I put it in my own words, amen, that you and I can be fat and flourishing. He's not talking in a natural sense. Amen. He's talking in a spiritual sense. Hallelujah. We can eat all we want. We can eat all we can hold. When God shows up and prepares a table and you and I come to church with willing vessels to pull up to the table and eat whatever God has prepared for us, we can leave here full this morning. I want you to stand to your feet as they get ready to continue singing this song. Hallelujah. I wonder this morning if I have at least challenged you just a little bit. Hallelujah. Leave your worries to leave your problems outside of the church house. Look, when you come to church, don't bring your problems. Don't bring your worries. Don't bring all of that stuff in the house of God. Leave it outside. It'll be there when you get back. Leave it outside. Make up your mind. You're going to come to church. Amen. And drink from the fountain of the Holy Ghost. You're going to drink from the water. Amen. You're going to drink from the well that never runs dry. And then you're going to eat from the table that God has prepared. Hallelujah. This may not be a whole lot of help to you this morning. But I hope it's a help to you in the future. Come to church ready to eat. Leave your pickiness at home. Leave your pickiness, amen, to your natural eating. Hallelujah. Don't pick the preacher apart. Don't pick the sermon apart. Just take what little bit you want and leave the rest. Take it, eat it all. Take and drink it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's free. It's nourishing. It's helpful. Hallelujah. And it'll give you the blessed assurance that you're going to be in that number. That you're going to be in that number. That's recorded in Revelation chapter 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, of all kindreds, of people, and tongues, stood before the throne of, throne of God and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Hallelujah. The Bible is telling us here somebody makes it. Somebody makes it to heaven. Somebody gets to stand around the throne. Somebody gets to bask, amen, in the sunshine of the Lord. And you and I want to be in that number today. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I pray, Lord, that you would build a longing hunger in every soul in this house. No place, no one else will do. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus. God, let there be a longing in our soul. A thirst in our soul. A hunger in our soul. I need you. I need you. For all of you that we can consume. For all of you, God, that we can enjoy. I need you. God, I need more of 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 you. God, I need
covenant church longing this morning, inside this morning, I need Lord. you I need you nothing no place no one else will do I need you I need you for you satisfy the longing inside I need you I need you put a stop to prayer in schools and ball games and a lot of other places out there in the world but in a lot of those instances they allow for a moment of silence I wonder if for just a moment we could shut the music down shut the singing down you could just close your eyes and spend one moment of silence Amen. Without lifted voices, without loud voices, just a moment of silence to where you can communicate with God and let Him know and understand that you are definitely hungry and thirsty for more of Him. Let's try it. Just a moment of silence right now. Well, I've tried to count 60 seconds. I don't know if I got the full minute there or not. A moment of silence. Sometimes we just need to quieten down. Get away from all the noises in life. And all of the turmoil in life. Just get somewhere real quiet. Communicate to God. Hallelujah. Even in silence, we can still communicate with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shake hands with folks in your area. Shake hands with one another this morning. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.